Dooley Noted, 6-4-2017. Hi, I'm Dr. Kathy Dooley. I'm here with some updates on how to perfect your dyeing bug. Uh, consider this dyeing bug 2.0. Uh, a lot of people are confused about how to properly cue the dyeing bug. I want to preface this uh, drill by stating you should first start them in supine 90-90 breathing positions with the appropriate cues. You can see that video on the Dr. Dooley Noted YouTube page under supine 90-90 breathing. Uh, after you get them anchored into that, which should always precede dying bug, then you can start to advance them into a stronger pattern uh, with the dying bug. Uh, a couple of the cues that are usually misconstrued, and I'm afraid it was in my previous uh, YouTube page, is the back into the floor cue. Um, you want to make sure that you're able to maintain lumbar lordosis and don't encourage a lumbar and thoracic spine flexion uh, during this drill. The key is to maintain neutrality and good core stiffness since the dying bug is actually trying to encourage core stiffness. Um, the dying bug is a, a progression of the supine 9090 where you're ambulating the limbs. You can choose to ambulate uh, legs and arms. I'm going to choose in this one to not ambulate the arms so I can use the arms to help me manage the intra-abdominal pressure or IAP of this drill. Now, for dying bug, the setup, we want a neck that's long. A chin that's tucked back, not forward, not down, but back. A chest that stays wide and ribs that are gently pulled down without losing any of the four cues. We consider those ID cues from immaculate dissection uh, for good spinal stability. An additional cue is the pelvis. Uh, the front and back of your hip bones should be relatively even. So no anterior tilt, no posterior tilt during the execution of this drill. After you've done the supine 90-90 progression, it's good to start with your hands up against a wall to help you monitor the pressure. Neck long, chin tuck, chest wide, ribs down. Push yourself away from the wall slightly. Take a deep breath in. Maintain the inhale as you pull the legs up. And a good thing to do is right away start to check your lordosis. Instead of pushing your back directly down into the floor where you're gonna lose some of your cues, you want to push it gently against your hands so you're maintaining lordosis. That's what most trainers and, uh, and therapists mean when they say push your back into the floor. And unfortunately, some people here push your back directly down into the floor and encourage flexion. We want to avoid that. So you want to actually just push gently into your hands, then remove your hands and put them either here or here. I'm going to start with my hands against the wall just to help me maintain some good pressure. And you can see my legs are in a 90-90 position, 90 degrees of hip flexion, 90 degrees knee flexion. Re-inhale and you'll slowly ambulate by pushing one heel to the floor. You'll re-inhale before ambulating. You always re-inhale before you put the legs back down. A couple of things that people forget during the dying bug is that it's not about how fast the legs ambulate. It's about ambulating on a stable platform. If you decide to incorporate arm movement, make sure that you're not missing the abdominal cue patterns. Um, one of the things I love to do during dying bug is to remove the hands from the wall and put them on the abdomen. Let me show that variation. So get yourself set up. Maintain the pressure here against your fingers and don't lose the pressure. This is a fantastic drill for learning how to be able to build intra-abdominal pressure, build core stiffness, but ambulate the limbs. It has a lot of carryover into things like squatting, into things uh, like deadlifting, because you're trying to maintain this core stiffness and not lose sight of your ab abdominal stability while you're trying to ambulate the limbs. I hope you like these uh, cues, and I hope you enjoy the dying bug. Duly noted.